lives in the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. What do you say we go get a couple of drinks? You know, maybe a little dancing. They used to call me uh, Soft Shoes, Caruso. Soft Shoes? Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side, the podcast where we talk about Tales from the Dark Side, the 80s horror anthology television show created by Richard Rubenstein and George Romero. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Today we're talking about The Old Soft Shoe, directed by Richard Friedman and written by Art Monterestelli from February 16th, 1986. All right, gentlemen, I, I don't know if I'm going to make the episode. The wind's hitting me hard. You hear that outside? There's a horn beeping. That's the bus. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it, gentlemen. You'll have to just go on without me. Uh, that was absolutely not a recreation <laughs> of the opening of this episode where Paul Dooley is clearly trying to cheat on his fucking wife. Are you cheating on me, Sean? Is, uh, that, what's, is that what you're in, insinuating? Sorry, guys. Yeah, great. Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, in my my dressing room or something. <laughs> That's something somebody cheating on their wife would say. Uh, clearly, <laughs> like Paul I'm, Dooley. I'm not cheating on my wife. <laughs> Click. Yeah. Shh, you hear that? It's shh, a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right off the gate, we're, we get this like sleazy character. <laughs> Yeah. Played by Paul Dooley. <laughs> Paul fucking Dooley. Uh, we've had on the show a couple of the non-Tales from the Dark Side, no. or Talks from the Dark Side, rather, but he's been on a couple episodes of Movie Dumpster. He's in the MDU. He's yes. uh, Mr. Cheese from Shakes the Clown. <laughs> right. And he's also in Monster in the Closet, when his wife is in the shower. Right, big fake yeah. out. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's picked up from that position and dropped into this fucking hotel. <laughs> he's now a traveling salesman who sells lingerie. Traveling lingerie salesman. Yeah, there you go. Old Frederick's so of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. old soft foot himself. It's soft shoe. Oh, excuse me. There you go. But before we, we fucking start stepping on this one, uh, can we, <laughs> let's get that Fangoria synopsis, shall we? All right, so the uh, Fangoria episode guide says, uh, stopping at a motel for the night, a traveling salesman is surprised to find a seductive woman waiting for him in his room. But the one-night stand becomes an exercise in supernatural revenge as the temptress turns out to be a ghost reliving the past murder of her unfaithful lover. That's, yeah. 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 That's, that's the episode. That's not, yeah. tells you everything, but you don't have any context. No. So, okay. It's like reading that out loud. It's like going through the beats of like the story. It's like, sure, that's the episode, but it's like, it's how we get through it. Yeah. That's the... I think that that's yeah. that's one of the better ones, honestly. Yeah, usually they're too spoilery. They take kind of like, well, thanks. Yeah, see it. See it. You yeah. don't need to watch the episode. You're yeah. good. Yeah. But this is, a, this. Uh, I think, you know, I always read that before these to kind yeah. of set up where we're going. This is a nice start, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And like I've already uh, pantomimed and joked about uh, Paul Dooley. Is in this fucking lobby, acting like he's like in a massive storm in the middle of nowhere, uh, telling his wife he's never gonna make it home. He's gotta like he's pulled over, honey. Uh, I can't. I gotta go. You hear that? It's a, it's a storm. And, you're like, ah, and he's like shaking the yeah. door and shit. Yeah, I meanwhile he's like sitting down in a little booth in a yeah. lobby. It's yeah. like there's no wind in yeah. the lobby. I gotta go. Uh, yeah. I, Instantly, you're like, what is this fucking guy doing? Cheating on his wife, not even really doing a good job at it. Okay, Paul Dooley. And also, like, a victim of circumstance, question mark. Like, he, like, is looking for an opportunity to cheat on his wife. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, and then turn around, and there's, like, a blonde woman checking into the motel he's at. Not Barbara Crampton. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah kind of. With this big fur coat on, and he's instantly hitting on her, and she's like... Uh, no, we're not getting a room together. I'll have my own fucking cabin. He's like, oh, come on, why not? Yeah, he's being a total, total sleazebag. He, was, he goes up to her, he, he's like, he's like, he's like, yeah, how you doing there, sweetheart? He's like, he's like, oh, you are you, Patty Mullen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you want to go out for some drinks later, a little dancing? What do you say? Uh, they used to call me old soft shoes. <laughs> right, which, if you actually look it up, is kind of a, what people called, uh, or this, the name of this episode is referenced to salesmen uh, stepping on the soft shoe. Or so. I looked it up earlier, more so just pushing for that sale, even though it's never going to happen more 
or less. But he he sells it in a way, no pun intended. He sells it in a way where it's like almost an innuendo. He's like, he's like a good he's like a good dancer because he's like yeah. he's like you know I'm fast on my feet but slow where it counts. Oh right? god! Yeah, it's like what is that supposed to mean? And she goes, it looks like you're a little dead where it counts. <laughs> he might as well go like this. Like, come on, yeah. man. What do you say, Miss Mink No software counts. Yeah, yeah software. <laughs> if you exactly. catch my drift, <laughs> a short word counts too. You one of them blue shoes. Uh, yeah. Uh, this also, I almost called him a landlord, but the hotel owner is kind of a hilarious little side character here. John Feidler. I think it's Feidler or Fieldler. Okay. From? He's he's the voice of Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm famous. I think he's no. He's a comedian, and he's like, he's in a ton of shit. But I'm familiar with him as Piglet. Okay, okay. Oh, I'm familiar funny. with him as this character in this episode now. But yes, you're. What you never watched Winnie the Pooh? When no, you were I a kid? did. But this this character has very unique look to him. It's this, such uh, an it's such an iconic voice. Uh, yes, but yeah. I'm just thinking about later when this character has like, for lack of a better term, a do rag in a fucking bathrobe <laughs> on, getting jerked off by a machine or something he's, like out of Steve Rule. He's very. <laughs> Health conscious. Yeah, uh, but this guy's kind of funny because he's like, oh, I'm all out of cabin, sorry, because the woman takes the last one. And uh, Paul Dooley's like, well, what about seven? Number seven's not sold. And he's like, ah, uh, that one's not for sale. Uh, there's something wrong with it. You don't want it. He might as well say it's haunted. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, uh, it's yeah. under construction. Uh, we don't rent it. Uh, it's broken. Someone died there. Oh, it's haunted. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's a ghost. Uh, he my he my dad actually, was drowned. He doesn't actually say someone died there. That no. might have uh, perked up old <laughs> yeah. uh, Dooley's ears, but <laughs> he goes, he goes, fine, I'll rent you. I'll rent your cabin. I can't even do his voice, but I'll rent your <laughs> cabin number seven, but I don't go for any hanky-panky in my rooms. I'll be down there. Look at his plate with my old shotgun. I'll bring to, my shotgun. To what, gonna... blow his balls <laughs> off? Yeah, uh, yeah. So while he's like rattling all this information off about this not haunted cabin, we, co we like kind of pan over to this turtle that he's got. He's like, yeah, that's Prometheus. It's got a literal candle on its shell. Like, how is that a safety thing? Yeah, it's like thing? glued to its shell with a lit <laughs> candle walking around this little fishbowl. <laughs> what is that? What is Where's <laughs> PETA? I, I, yeah. I know I'm not even defending PETA, but like... Does a fucking turtle with a candle? And I, what I does just, he say? It's a, a dedication to his father? Prometheus is That's his past? name, and it's a dedication it's, it's to my father, and there's a big <laughs> painting a of his painting? dad, yeah. uh, who which, used to own the uh, the, the, the hotel, which or the motel. Kind of relevant later, but also not really. Uh, weird. I don't know if it was even considered animal abuse. I don't know if that turtle was even feeling the heat, but it's just weird. This fucking turtle, like on a Dark Souls or something, or a fa dark fantasy uh, novel, this fucking turtle with a candle. Okay. Yeah, like it's showing you the way down a dark hallway or something. Something. But uh, just, maybe. just by the way, the turtle can feel all of that because it's connected directly to its spine. Oh, it can? Yeah. Oh, that poor fucking turtle. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, it could feel that something's on him. Hmm. I'm very hot. I don't know why. <laughs> but what here, is this on my back? So we could see you in the dark. In the dark. Oh, yeah. But here, have some pig's feet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Good yeah. For the digestive tract. <laughs> he mentions that. I uh, mean, Joe, like, what is had with this guy? Once. Yeah. Uh, they were pickled, but like many years ago, we were like trying weird foods once, and that was one of the things on the dock. That's what he gives him a, 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 a jar of pickled pig's feet. He, he fucking goes out to the cabin and he's carrying this can. He just <laughs> lops it over his shoulder. Like, I'm never eating this. The, like, John Field, Fieldman has, like, such great, like, little one-liners in between. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, yeah, don't steal the soap. Uh, last guy who stole the soap uh, had a real bad accident on the highway. <laughs> Which is so weird. It's just it's like, He keeps saying all these weird little things. It's like, a turtle, pig's feet. Oh, don't steal the soap. Uh, That's great. Okay, yeah. see you later. I, right. I will say it just feels like funny lines to say for a TV show, not something you'd actually hear in reality. But again, the man's got a turtle with a candle on the back. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Yeah. He's like an old, he's like an off kilter like woods guy. Yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah. like eccentric like ho lonely hotel. Uh, weird lonely yeah, host character. Lo yeah, yeah kind of. Right? Yeah. yeah, health nut. So Paul Dooley goes into this room, and you know it kind of looks like thrown together, but not the worst room in the world. Kind of looks outdated, if anything. It looks like a roach motel. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, it does. It looks pretty bad. Yeah. I was trying to put a nice little uh, cover over and not say it looks totally like shit. In fact, he goes in the bathroom to have a fucking bath, and there's a literal peephole in the wall. <laughs> it's just, it, I don't think it was there on purpose, but, like, it's so old, there's a yeah. hole in it. Yeah. And, he see, and he sees he sees Barbara Mullen through the hole. But he's, like, looking through this peephole. Or Pat, Patty Crampton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's looking through this fucking peephole. He's like, keep that in mind for later. He's like, when he comes back to jack off and hope she's in there, oh, I guess. Oh, yeah, he's like, he's like, I better take a cold bath. <laughs> 
which actually kind of funny. Yeah, he does give him give him credit here. He does say like, "Oh, nope, nope, uh, not this time." Uh, the writing. So, 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 so and- let me let me let me get this straight. You, you're like ready to drop your pants at the drop of a dime to cheat on your wife, but you're not going to masturbate. But you, you draw the line at like looking to people. I mean, that's you know. I mean, the, I think those are two different kinds of things. This character, two different walk- kinds of like creepy scumbag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. This guy is a walking contradiction because he says one fucking thing and then one second later does the opposite, as we're going to find out. Voyeurism versus infidelity. Uh, yeah. Well, he, you can look, but you can't touch Joe. Unfortunately, yeah. he never got that memo. Except you can himself. touch, you can't look. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> he uh, so he, he for some reason decides I'm not going to take a bath anymore I'm going to go lay down in the other room so I can fall asleep or something so this ghost can appear well he turns on this transistor right? this fucking like oh. Ralphie ass yeah, like Christmas old... story 20s radio I haven't radio. seen one of these since I was a kid yeah he even makes a note of it he, said, yeah. he hasn't oh, I haven't seen one of these in yeah. a long time but he turns it on and it's like some old like swing tune from the 20s and he's fucking falling asleep and all of a sudden this beautiful woman appears in this black lingerie she's like Harry <laughs> What's up, Harry? Where you been? I've been missing you. And he's like, I'm not Harry. But, but I'll I, fuck you. Yeah, but I can be. Yeah, I can be. I'm Harry where it counts. He <laughs> 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 should have said that. Thank you. Just Thanks. to go with the theme. <laughs> He'll be here all night, folks. Oh, my God. But he's not even questioning it. At first, maybe he's like, <laughs> for half a second, maybe thinking, oh, maybe I fell asleep. But then she's like climbing on top of him. And he's like, is this really happening? Yeah. Okay. She's like straddling this dude, kissing him all over his face. She's like, I got a surprise for you, Harry. He's like, that's fine, but I'm not Harry. I'm I'll not. Gonna, let me see those snoops. I'm definitely not going to mention I have three kids and a wife. <laughs> uh, why would I mention that? Yeah. Um, so the, so Barbara Crampton comes over and knocks on the door <laughs> and is like, and is like, would you keep it down in there? And, he, and he's like, who's that? And he's is like, there, I don't even know who that is. Is there another woman? Is that another woman? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She she starts cracking. Yeah. Also, like, this Crampton woman or whatever we're calling her, how the fuck are you hearing this? But okay. <laughs> I guess the music's like that, le- or the walls are thin enough to have holes in them. <laughs> I guess. Well, I mean, we see yeah. that bathroom, but. And she's like, is that Marianne? He's like, no, that's not Marianne. And she's like, well, who's Marianne? She's like, well, that's my wife. And she fucking like smacks him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, everyone knows my wife's name. Like, okay, everyone's keeping tabs on your cheating lifestyle. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> he's like, I, I didn't hide anything. I was upfront about it. I always told all the women I uh, paid money to have sex with that I'm married. Don't overthink it. I have the ring right here. He paints himself as one. He's, he's a decent like, oh, guy now. Yeah. But this is a great twist, yeah, even right gets, here. Yeah, now we're starting to get like a little much weirder. Because it's funny because yeah. Barbara Crampton's like, hey, would you shut up in there? Yeah, Turn the radio yeah. down. And he's like, no, go away. Bye. <laughs> I'm trying to fuck this I'm ghost. over you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then this is where she starts to kind of talk a little darker, a little yeah. darker. Well, she's like, she's like, I got a surprise for you, Harry. He's like, she's like, that's it. There's nothing can be done about it, Harry. I'm sorry. You've broken my heart too many broken times. My, and he's like, he's like, what are you talking about? We haven't even done anything yet. Right, yeah. Got six little surprises yeah. for you. <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah. does. They can all run faster than you. Count them. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Lewis is creeping himself ten. in the corner. <laughs> well, she shoots him a couple times in the shoulder, she, in the gut. She brings his gun up and just blasts him in the shoulder. And you're like, oh, it's a ghost gun. And then all of a sudden he's bleeding. And then she shoots him again in the gut. And he's he's bleeding all over the place. Yeah, we don't get squibs a lot in this show. No, no. and this is, is when you knew, you mentioned blood in the monsters in my room yeah. episode. I think oh, this yeah. is the second instance yep. of that. Well, it's like, not around his neck this time. No, oh, but yeah. like, but like this man is shot and there's blood coming out of him. Well, then he goes back to the 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 lobby and this yeah. fucking eccentric uh, guy that owns the place is again. He's got the the workout machine. Yeah. He just like looks over. He's like, I'm bleeding. I've been shot. And it's like, there's no blood. He's yeah. like, it's all imaginary and he goes, or whatever. He goes, what do you mean? You haven't been shot. He's like, where? He's like, here. Right and here. here. And he's like, oh, shit. Fucking Piglet is not having it. He's like, come on, come to my room. And he grabs the shotgun. He's like, all right. He co- so so he yeah he heads out with his little with his little uh, Randy Quaid hat and his robe. <laughs> this outfit is something else. And his galoshes. Oh, and something weird he says here that I just I it's in my notes. He's yeah. like he's like if you're not gonna do something, I'm gonna punch you in the nose. Yeah, he's like because oh. he wants to call the cops. <laughs> oh, that's right. And, yeah, yeah. and Piglet's like no, don't call the cops. I run a respectable joint around here. Uh, yeah, okay. So he goes down to the room to like search it. He's like he's like come down here with me. So he's like all right. Looking around the room, nothing's there. They go into the bathroom, and the tub is full, but there's like a corsage in the tub. And he's right. like, guess what scared you? Yeah. And he's like, oh, weird. no, you don't understand. Yeah, there was I a woman. I don't have time for this. I want another 10 bucks. <laughs> no, no, 
know what happens yeah. is he comes out and he sees all the lingerie in his suitcase. Oh, that's right. That's what it was. And he's, he's like, what's this about? He's like, he's like, no, 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 that's my business. And he's like, yeah, I'm sure it is. I make it my business. <laughs> well, you're right. He says he wants another 10 bucks because when he first gets the hotel room to get him to buy the, the or rent the yeah. room, he's like, give me an extra 10 bucks. Yeah, because you're a fucking creep wearing like ladies underwear. <laughs> Milking this bastard. Buffalo See. bobbing around the- uh, Oh, he's buffalo bobbing, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, buffalo puts the, it, it puts the- Paul Dooley. Buffalo Bill. No, Shit. Buffalo Bob is... Uh, oh, that's uh, Joe Dirt. No, it's totally <laughs> Buffalo Bob. Yeah. Uh, Bu- Buffalo Bob Dooley. <laughs> Puts the Joe Dirt in the hole. <laughs> I think at this point, I understand the rest of the episode needs to happen. And, you know, some people are... They get over things a lot easier than others. But if a ghost, uh, a mysterious woman, whatever the fuck <clears> this <throat> is, shot me, I don't think I'm going to immediately then after when it appears again be like, you know what? Uh, I'm still okay with the fucking, like, are we still going to do that? Yeah, well, well, it's a hot ghost. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. I'd, I'd go back in. Look, well, that's what I, I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was about to say. Like, I'd sit on the Ignore bed. Ignore the bullets. Whatever. I, I, I wouldn't want to stand up a pretty lady. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, I'm, I, yes, I am Harry, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Where it counts, like Chris said, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Ever since Ghostbusters, man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. <laughs> here, you can put that shot here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I, I'd fuck a hot ghost for sure. Um, so, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'm just saying the circumstances this thing shot me is threatening me. Things are not going in the direction I thought they were going. I'm not going to just forget about the last hour. Well, you, it, he, she shot you and lived, so you got another chance to fucking fix it again because I guess it resets. I just want to get in my fucking car and just leave and say, I guess I'm not cheating my wife. What the fuck was I thinking? This is a wake-up call. Never again. Does a Obviously, ghost count? he doesn't get that, that memo. But... Does, a, does a ghost count? <laughs> That's what he's thinking. <laughs> uh, sorry, honey. No, you don't get it. No, she wasn't real. <laughs> no, nah, she was. It was a spectral thing. Because this might even be where he says it, or it might be when he's about to get shot. He's like, "Well, you know, I have three kids. I have a wife." And it's like, "Yeah, what's a ghost job? That doesn't count." <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, like, and it's almost like I kind of love it in a sense because it's just this character just trying to find any out, any excuse of why he's a good person. Yeah. But yeah. we all know he's an asshole. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the first time I ever did this. Wink, wink. You know, I did one other time and I was smashed and I don't even remember it didn't even happen I don't know but I keep trying to relive that moment of glory uh, yeah, by going to these hotels and telling my wife I'm stuck in the snow chasing the fucking dragon I guess right, yeah. yeah and a weird thing that happens too it's like he finds like this box he goes back to the room yeah, yeah. oh yeah and finds the ro- <laughs> finds like the box with like the newspaper article in it weird the corsage is in there too yeah. and then there's a newspaper article from 1950 and it says hotel oh. owner drowned yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like, huh. January 8th, 1950. And it's like, hey, that's tomorrow's that's date. Tomorrow. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Now you have this like little inclination of like, that looks like the painting that was on <laughs> the wall in the fucking office. That looks like Prometheus. In, in <laughs> fact, yeah, right. In fact, I think he finds all that before she reappears. So now it's like doubly like, why the fuck would you hang out? But yeah. what do I know? Hey, Harry. Remember that big surprise? Click. <laughs> <laughs> no, she ends up like putting herself in like a ballroom gown and they dance. That's right. Yeah. She gives him like a sparkly dress. She gives him the, the pair of old soft shoes TM and he puts them on. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's in like a tuxedo. Ah, my nickname. Ah. And this uh, this is where it gets weird because now it's like you have like the, the like the disco ball lights mm-hmm. going around the room. Yeah. The like the shining music kicks in. And it's like oh, real, it starts getting real eerie. Very yeah. shining ass. Yeah. He puts his boogie shoes on and and he's like, you know, they call me old soft shoes. I was the pride of Toledo. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, okay, Harry, whatever you say. And then she kind of, uh, you know, leads him to the bathroom. Yeah, like, co- let's let's seal the deed. Come in here, Harry, into the bathroom. Yeah. Door knocks again. It's Barbara Crampton. <laughs> turn <laughs> that music turn, down. Turn, turn like that the, what, radio the off. fourth time she comes over or something? <laughs> yeah. When she could just bang on the wall. Yeah. Uh, well. Theoretically, right? Yeah. She's got to get her uh, due. You know, she's in this episode. Let her have a few lines. Yes. Come in the bathroom, Harry. The water's still warm, Harry. Oh, in this shot, it's like it's like panning up her like. That's pretty real risque, close. dude. Yeah. Like oh, she yeah. takes off her stocking yeah. and like takes it, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah. there's, oh, there's, oh there's, mama." There's a lot of great <laughs> shots of that of him just like sweating profusely yeah. and like losing it, can't control a uh, little a dually, and uh, cutting from him to her to him to her, and then it just like cuts to a cop on a phone, and it's like, "What? Yeah, go, uh, yeah we're not going to move the, the chick with the tits. <laughs> bring back the fucking chick with the tits." No, instead we have this cop just expositioning like, yeah, we're not going to move the body till you guys get here. And I'm like, oh, he's fucking dead. Oh, okay. 
Like well, like clerks, right? Yeah. Well, he's like he's like, damn, ain't that a bitch? Remember when your father was drowned in that bathtub? It's the same damn thing. Yeah, and this is weird. It's I actually had to rewind it, like on you know rewatching yeah. this episode. Had to rewind it because I'm like, you have a whole bunch of exposition in like 15 seconds. <laughs> Literally, yeah. yeah. The yeah. cops like, yeah, that that girl who killed your dad drowned him in the bathtub in that same cabin, and then she left, and then she killed herself, and then on we the found same him the next night, day, and then she the found the same bathtub, the same and then time. she was in the same. Yeah, it's like, wait, what the <laughs> fuck? What? Yeah, and Piglet's like, yeah, I don't know, and he's like, we should fucking have that thing demolished. I, I think that there is a better way they could have conveyed that, but I understand they're trying to keep the mystery up until that last sure. minute, so it's I'm kind of okay with it, but it is very much like, this is what literally happened. You yeah. need to know it's this. It's like, we're running out of episode. It's like, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I personally think it would have been great to just like have Piglet come in and find Paul Dooley under the water with like his eyes open. Mm -hmm. That would have yeah. been great. Yeah. Uh, but to speaking of Paul Dooley with his eyes open, we kind of come back to the room, and I do love this like pushing shot of the camera coming in of him in the tub and his just like mouth open with the water surrounding yeah. him. It's kind of uh I, I don't want to overuse the word creepy. I feel like I use it a lot on the show, but it is incredibly creepy. Just this this guy dead in this tub thinking he's about to have the ride of his life <laughs> with the music on. Yeah, yeah the right. music's still playing. But the thing to note here is like also before it shows him in the tub, mm -hmm. the woman's in the room right. holding like the corsage. Yeah. And just uh, kind of yeah. looking at it like real, like just creepy like. And yeah. then it goes over to the bathroom right. and shows him like, and it takes its time. Mm -hmm. Like getting up there. First you see the tub and like his feet sticking out. Then it goes over the tub and sees good. it's good. You're right. The order of those events is more uh, impactful, but uh, it freeze frames on his ass in that right. tub. And it's like, ooh. Okay. And also a thing I have to note here is, you know, every at the beginning of every episode, you know, I read out of the Fangoria like episode guide. Yeah. There's a shot here. I'll like we'll have it on screen here, but it shows it's like a behind the scenes shot. Of him in the tub. Oh no way! From a different angle. Oh. Yeah. So um, so it's always cool when they, you know, especially like Fangoria and stuff. They always had a knack for doing that. It's showing behind the scenes stuff that's like never in like the actual movie. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Like a production shot. Yeah, that's really cool. So yeah, what did uh, what do we think of this episode, guys? Ah, oh, this is a solid ass episode. Um, this is definitely better than the last few in my personal opinion. If you've been watching, uh, Paul Dooley's just a treat. I don't even really like love the plot of this episode this is a very character driven episode and it really works because that in, in other episodes i might not feel the same but paul dooley uh, apologies i don't remember the rest of the actors but piglet uh, and the main woman and even that crampton woman knocking on the door are all very good in this <laughs> uh in this whole like this this thread of the episode where it's like you're trying to get a read on what paul dooley's really about is he this scummy salesman is he just looking for a thrill uh, or is he wrong place, wrong time? It's actually all three. Yeah, it's all uh, the above. He never really redeems himself. Every time you think he might kind of step away from the situation, he dives deeper in and he kind of uh, pays for it at the end there, which is a very classic uh, creep show uh, s kind of thing. Very classic uh, Tales from the Crypt, Tales from the Dark Side, rather. Uh, episode, uh, in my opinion, as far as like the the way it kind of the flow of the episode, the ups and downs uh, feels very uh, uh, right out of those comic books, like anthology formula. Yeah, exactly. I guess I'm kind of stating the obvious on some level, but very specific on this one. I think of that the 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 narrative structure comes to mind, makes me think of Creep Show. Uh, so yeah, uh, with all that said, uh, it's it's uh, at, at the risk of repeating myself. Paul Dooley, great in this episode. Like it a lot, but uh, don't love it, but it's it's definitely a cut above the rest. Yeah, I think this is a great little episode. It's like, I know I've kind of said this last few of these we've done, but it's like, I like it more as it progresses. And like the more episode we see, it's like when it starts unraveling itself, I'm like, oh, here we go. Getting somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And this one's like no exception. It's like, it keeps getting creepier the more it goes. And by the end, it's like, cool. It's like, this was a fun little story. This was a nice little, you know, short and everything uh, you know, episode. But um yeah, I think this one's this one's a lot of fun. It's like you don't know exactly where it's going. It's like you have ideas, especially when the woman shows up and it's like, I'm not Harry. It's like, all right, there's a ghost in the room that yeah, whatever. It's like you sort of start to put the pieces together, but I don't mind that because of like the ride that it takes and where it ends up. Yeah. So I like it. It's a fun little episode. And before Joe gives his opinion, to your point, Chris, it is another one of those things. Just You see this in movies and writing all the time, but it's an effective uh, tension-building thing. Even though it's still tales, it's not really a lot of tension. There's still a little bit there. The audience, they kind of figure this out, that it's a ghost before he does. But uh, I think that adds to it overall. And, um, yeah, I think it is, like, written, like, very well. And it's, like, you see where it goes and, like, the ride it takes you on. And a thing to note here is, like, the writer... 
actually went on to do a lot of like big mainstream stuff. Mm. Um, the ones that stick out the most are like he did the Hunted for um, William Friedkin, oh. and then he actually did uh, uh, Rambo, the like the 08 yeah, one yeah, yeah. with Sylvester Stallone. Like I guess they co-wrote it together. No shit. Which is like if you I know you haven't seen that. So <laughs> I, I haven't, but that's pretty incredible. Oh, wait, wait, which yeah. scenes did he write, Chris? Was it all the ones with the exploding bow and arrow? Oh, yeah, was it the yeah, the turret explosions scenes? with everybody's <laughs> like yeah, like limbs falling off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a movie. Great writer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's an endorsement or not, Chris, but I'll take it. Uh, this is a great one. This is actually one of my favorite episodes of the second season. Um, this is where, like, I was introduced to Paul Dooley, like, as a kid. Oh. And then I'd see him pop up and be like, oh, shit, that's the guy from Monster in the Closet. That's the guy from Shakes Clown, blah, blah, blah. The guy from Tales from the Dark Side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, this one just feels really good. You have a really good balance of uh, creepiness. There's a little bit of comedy. There's a little bit of drama. Um, Horniness. Oh, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah, definitely wants to fuck this episode. Um it's also a little strange, too, because, like, I don't necessarily think that Paul Dooley deserves the comeuppance that he gets. He's a cre- He's a bit of a creep. People have gotten comeuppances for lesser shit on this show. Well, he's I, still I a know. cheater. Like, he's still a cheater, but then he he's like, I only did it once. I think he's just saying that. You think so? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's getting caught in his fucking lie. He's trying to get out of it any yeah. way he can. You know, not to, like, derail, like, your, like, final thoughts, but, yeah. like, I kind of like how he didn't deserve it. Completely. Oh yeah, no, no. Where no. it's like has a little more. It's more of like a gut punch. Sure, and the, and then you kind of feel for the guy. Yeah, I guess exactly. is, is what I'm trying to yeah. get because it's not it. it's not like fuck this guy. It's like oh shit, did he he didn't really yeah. deserve that? <laughs> Goddamn, <Yeah. laughs> it's conflicting. You didn't have to go all the way there. Yeah. Um, I love how they play with um, uh, like when he gets shot. I that's one of my favorite scenes is when she and you're like fuck and you're watching this and you're like oh shit. Like he just was shot, oh, yeah. and then yeah. like that total payoff when he goes into uh, see see the caretaker, and he's like, "I've been shot," and there's nothing on him. Um, I don't know, man. It's just a really good ghost story um, that's really well written, and uh, it's just a ton of fun uh, to to watch. It's again, it's creepy, um, and it's got some funny elements to it. So, and it's like I always like stories that have like a ghost that has like unfinished business yeah mm. or a ghost stuck in like the past the time loop yeah. yeah like there's a there's a very there's a really good episode of tales from the crypt where the guy inherits and i'll just won't make this whole thing but there's a uh, really good episode of tales from the crypt where a guy like inherits a building or i forget like a hotel or i think it's like just some old farm building from his father who died in like a fire or something and he goes there and there's people like having a party and stuff whatever spoiler yeah. alert they're the ghosts of people who died in a fire that oh. were caused by his fault it's oh a shit whole, it's like a mind fuck kind it's of a thing. whole yeah. thing it's yeah. a solid episode yeah but it's like that kind of thing where it's like there's a ghost still like their like spirit is still like yeah. staying Active. where yeah. it left off well that's and it's like there's some cool there's always some nice uh, story potential there i guess my question is <laughs> she shoots him earlier in the episode and it's not it didn't really happen. Yeah. So what happened in the tub? Hey, wake up. Erotic <laughs> asphyxiation up. <laughs> or some yeah. shit? Um, I mean, we mentioned the shining earlier, or at least I definitely did. Uh I it definitely is leaning into that element of supernatural. I mean, it's not even a comparable thing, but I on the very base level, ghost it's fucking with you, but it can fucking actually hurt you if it wants to, I think, without overthinking it. She fucked him she fucked him into a heart cardiac arrest. Is that I what she happened? Pulled his ass into that tub and he had a heart attack. Yeah. I don't think he fucked anything <laughs> in his mind or otherwise. Or like he could have thought he's like getting to a bathtub with her. Yeah. Yeah. But in fact, he's actually like getting, he's, he's just, he slipped and fell and yeah, hit, his, hit his head yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, or he's just not even dead. And it's just like, hey, wake, just poke him with a stick. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah he's got to wake I'm up. Soft shoes. You didn't get shot. You didn't drown. <laughs> he's narcoleptic. Wake up. Yeah. Uh, so, so another question is so is, is this this ghost's unfinished business? Like, is she done now again? I think. Or is she always coming back? I think she's, she's stuck to the room. She's waiting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's totally, it's totally happened before, right? It oh, yeah. had to have yeah. because dude's like, I don't rent that room. Yeah. It must have had a couple times for him to just. I guess he said it's like its own bungalow. Yeah. So you didn't want to like. I guess that's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Guy sounds like a cheapskate. So <laughs> he didn't yeah. want to tear it down. Yeah. <laughs> I. It is kind of like you're saying though that classic. I mean, there's multiple you could argue classic ghost uh, uh, tropes, but I do like that you're right where it is. This ghost is stuck in this time period, this location. It's just reenacting whatever happened right before its death. 
I mean, not literally, but it's you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like that angle. Like, American Horror Story kind of did that a lot in the early seasons, and then I think it kind of, like, lost its own fucking plot, but that idea of the way ghosts operate, in a larger sense, I always kind of find interesting. Vengeful when... spirit. Yeah. yeah. It's also, yeah. also kind of of a, a little bit like the Sentinel. Yep. A little oh, bit absolutely. like that. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Especially uh, the bathtub. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's even a little like The Shining with the bathtub. Oh, yeah, I mean, not even too. a one-to-one. Yeah. Well, not I don't... to keep saying that, yeah. but... It, well, it, and also yeah. with the music Fozzie. and everything, it's like you do get a lot of Shining here. Yeah, if mm. Grandma was actually like a hot <laughs> yeah. chicken lingerie. If? What are you talking about? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if. <laughs> she can be with yeah. uh, Paul Dooley's uh, lingerie right. briefcase. Of course, obviously. yeah. You want to buy something? Okay. We Go, got something for your yeah, side. Ghost and lingerie. Here's, and here's grandma photoshopped with lingerie on <laughs> coming out of the tub. I mean, granny, a nice red number. Granny Van Dam <laughs> said, sign her up. Sure did. But yeah, uh, Chris, do you have any Midnight Madness shows coming up? Yeah, I got uh, lots more Midnight Madness coming up. So uh, follow me on Instagram, tape underscore hell, and you can see uh, what kind of shows got coming up, what kind of uh, movie parties are coming up. And uh, hope you can make it out to Midnight Madness. You got a show coming up on Saturday, April 13th, starting at 10 p.m. You got a quadruple feature of Night of the Comet, High Tension, Chopping Mall, and Martyrs. Mix and match your favorite movies and make yourself a custom double feature. Make sure to follow Chris at tape underscore hell on Instagram and grab your tickets now at thebasey.org. We'll see you there. So that was The Old Soft Shoe. Let us know in the comments what you thought about this episode. And if you could do us a favor, like and share this video if you're digging the show. Or if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, leave us a five-star review because it really helps the show uh, reach more listeners. But until next time, I'm Joel Escola. I'm Shutter Work. And I'm Slow Work Counts. No, I'm Chris Barr. Tales from the Dark Side is always there, waiting for us to watch it, waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us.